So you're thinking about relocating to Perth or Western Australia, but you might have a few questions before you do so. Some of them may be, how easy is it going to be to find work? How hard is it going to be to find accommodation? Well, over the last four to eight weeks, I've done exactly this. And in this video, I'm going to share with you my tips, my tricks and my insights of how I've done it and how I can help you to do just the same. All that plus some final tips towards the end. So make sure you stick around. Let's get into it. and welcome back to yet another video. If you're new and just joining, what's up? My name is Benjamin Hyden. I'm a video creator and an experienced traveler. I put videos on my personal experiences, which are of mostly travel and also self-development. So if that's your kind of vibe, then consider subscribing. Just want to say again, once really quickly, the massively thank massive thanks to the continuous support to this channel it gives me so much joy to be filming creating producing these videos for you all um, and i hope that you find some value out of any of my vids online so to catch you all up to speed of what's been happening the last four or five weeks i managed to find a job after applying for literally so many different companies here in perth wa um, i managed to find a new role as a driller offsider which is in the drilling industry, uh, which is working fly in, fly out, i.e. FIFO, from Perth. The job consists of swings where I do two weeks on and one week off. So I do 14 days in a row and then have seven days off. And then it basically repeats after that. With this opportunity, with this job, I have uh, travel included, food included, and accommodation all included. So everything that I pretty much earn is a plus, which is good. On my weeks off, I'm very fortunate to come back here to Burns Beach, stay here with Toby and Connie, and obviously they're in their family home, which is absolutely amazing. But I have also tried living in different hostels uh, in the city, uh, which we'll dive into a little bit later on. One of the main ingredients that attracted me to relocating and moving to Perth was specifically the FIFO industry. Obviously, as you know, in previous videos, I've talked about what I've done over in Europe. Um, and for me, it's always been like chasing the lifestyle rather than the money. And obviously, when I worked for tour operators in different companies, normally like the accommodation or probably food would sometimes be included as well. So I wanted to see if I could replicate that here and still chase that, but also try and make a bit more money at the same time. I was very specific to what kind of job I wanted to go into because I'm more so focused on wanting to make a little bit of a career out of it, a career out of it now, and see a bit of longevity from the from the work and the job itself. And obviously, like I've decided that I really like it here in Perth, so it's it's where I want to kind of set some roots up. As I've also began to dive into the research of uh, the FIFO industry, being a complete freshie or newbie, as you say. Yeah, I studied all the different jobs, different things that you could do. I looked into operators like dump trucks. I looked into labor, lab like laborers, trade assistants, all this sort of stuff that like entry level jobs, but still something that I could use my experience that I used, uh, that I built in Northern Territory being like a labor and, and a trade assistant to do that over here. And then fortunately for me, when I found that driller offsider role, it was it was super helpful to kind of transfer those skills into another job and into a new industry in the, mi in the mining industry that I've never done before. Another reason to why I wanted to get into the, the swings of it, so like doing two ones, was basically because it would allow me to have more time off to do what I wanted to do. So when I'm at work and I'm doing the 14 days on or however many there is like we're there to work and we're there to grind and we're there to save money basically whereas when I come back instead of having a weekend off because I've got the full seven days not only does it give me more time to do what I want to do within that week for example recording these videos as I literally love it so much and doing other like things like going to the beach going out hiking or going and doing water sports or whatever it may be. Yeah, it's allowed me to have more time to do that, which I'm super grateful for. And it is 
it makes all the difference to kind of my lifestyle. So let's talk about finding work. In my opinion, of all the different relocations that I've done, hand on heart right now, full disclaimer, this has probably been the hardest one of them all. The main things that I look for when I relocate is to try and find work, to try and find accommodation and to be able to basically budget and eat well, you know? Three main variables of survival, factors of survival. Like I applied for so many different jobs. I, I, knew that, I knew for the fact that I definitely wanted FIFO, but I didn't know what job to work in FIFO at that time, like four, four to eight weeks ago. So I applied for labouring jobs, trade assistants. I've tried for like trainee operators, some operator jobs just to see if I get any like callbacks. But then also I looked into utilities, so like bartending, uh, cleaning, uh, kitchen, all that sort of stuff, especially with these permanent mine sites that I've heard about. There's so many different jobs you can apply for. So every kind of experience that I had from previous jobs, I wanted to be able to show that um, on the CV and, and get it out there to people in order to make it work. So in order to find work and go through this amount of research, the three main ways that I look at to obtaining a new job, finding one, is the first one, which is online. The second one, which is in person. So like as you go into like bars and ask for the manager and see if there's any vacancies. And then the third one, which is networking, which is still like you can do online and offline, but it's more so about talking to people, seeing who works in different places, what industry they work in, how long they've worked there for. And I think that's a lot more of a softer approach to it. But with networking, knowing is knowing someone in that job or is, is half the battle because then they can share their personal experiences on who they work for and what job they do which could also help you down the line so the first one being online different places that i looked at online were seek jobs jora also looked at indeed i also looked direct google search bit of YouTube as well just literally like expanded the horizons you know like proper looked at all different places and kind of saw what dates were on the on the job ads is it like was it posted a day ago was it pasted 60 days ago you know obviously the most recent the most better because then obviously you're gonna be getting in there first and you're gonna be like looking dedicated to kind of wanting to obtain that job second way of finding the work obviously being in person which is I found to be uh, quite successful with doing this just because I think that I'm a little bit better in person than on paper per se especially if it's hospitality or like food and beverage or, or any of that sorts of industries because it's, kind of, it's full-on customer service and obviously you can go into these establishments whether it's a restaurant whether it's a bar or wherever it is you're looking and you can go and ask to speak to the manager and then they can see you like as a human interaction, like kind of who you are, what interests you have and how you hold yourself as a person. And then obviously if you can build the rapport and build a relationship with them and then somewhat seem I intrigued and interested in trying to ask for vacancies or ask for a job, then obviously that's half the battle in, in terms of actually getting one. Third example with networking, this can be done in a variety of different ways. Like you can do it online and like, pop up in someone's DMs, but more specifically, I think it's more powerful when you're doing it in person. Like if you move into a hostel in the city and you're checking in and you're seeing loads of people around, maybe sometimes there's people in the hostel that are working in that industry. I was only in there for two days after I came back from FIFO. But yeah, I saw people in there that were working in FIFO and working in different industries as well. And some were traveling also, but I feel that when you put yourself into that environment, you're becoming a bit more aware of kind of how people go about their days and if you can like somehow start a conversation and learn about them by asking, oh, what sort of work do you do? Or how long have you been here in Perth? Or how long have you been here in this city? And then once you build that rapport, that connection, then you can start to ask a little bit, of, ask for advice. Another thing that I've come to realize about Perth WA is that, to say it bluntly, in my opinion and, and from my experience, is that Perth is a lot about 
who you know, not so much about what you know. And this is the true story of how I got my job. So I basically was networking online, um, asking a few people like who've worked in the FIFO industry, more so like in the drilling industry. I remember that I, I met someone in Northern Territory, his name's Ryan, spoke to him about this sort of type of role and this sort of job. That's where I first learned about the industry. And I messaged him, just asked him, do you know of any jobs that were going? I'm looking to get into this. I've got a big labor background. And he passed me on someone's details. And I basically messaged him. He turned out he's the ops manager of this company. And then after that, we, are, uh, we had a conversation on the phone. We then uh, had an interview. He really liked me and I, I really liked what he was offering as well. So it worked. And then, yeah, next thing you know, I'm working for the company in the yard and then flying out literally two weeks ago, doing my first swing. So that kind of transaction, that employer-employee relationship was built on literally just knowing someone that knew someone that did that sort of job. With all that said though, I do think that documentation, i.e. like your CV or resume uh, and cover letters and all that sort of stuff should be like really considered and looking really good. Because at the end of the day, if you're applying for a job online and you're literally competing with another 50, 100 plus people, then in order to stand out on paper, digital paper or whatever, like it needs to look good. So for that example, like I, I've added a picture to my CV of, of me looking professional. I've also got it all in bullet points on the CV. So like when you come to read it, it's like, one, two, three, th three things, and it's mostly about ticking the boxes for the employer. When I specifically looked at the job that I wanted to go for, I researched it, saw what was needed of the employee in order to be successful, and then I basically looked at my experience, looked where they both crossed over, and then put those specific things onto my previous job, which was true anyway, of like different tasks that I've done and what I've been so successful in. And then, so when my employer looked at my CV at the interview, they were like, oh, he's done this, 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 and this. It's bullet points, it's easy, it's easy to read. Tick, tick, tick. This guy looks like the business. Wicked, let's ask him some more questions and see if he's for us. Wicked. Have the documents up to date and ready, whether that's a digital copy where you store it on your phone or your laptop and it's easy to access, or it's via paper and you store it in your bag or store it in your room or whatever. Uh, make sure that they've got a recent address on them, whether you use a hostel address or somewhere where you're going to be living short term uh, before you find further long term accommodation. I've used hostel address many times, it's fine, it works. And then also obviously email address and a contactable phone number. So if you do get any callbacks, you can answer it straight away and then get the conversation and relationship going. Two other big things that I include on my CV, which I've found to help, is highlighting my transferable skills. This massively helps if you're going into a new industry. Obviously, I went from construction to mining, so it's somewhat similar. So I basically was wanted to put all the transferable skills and bullet point them as well, whether it's like problem solving, adaptability, teamwork, all that's that's just a few examples. I've done another video on that, so I'll make sure you check up there and you can have a look on that one. And then also interests, like they want to learn about you, right? And learn what kind of person you are. For me, I put on snowboarding, water sports, hiking, training, fitness, gym, all that sort of stuff. So, okay, so that moves on to find an accommodation. Um, with this, especially when I'm relocating to a new place, I'll always start with just getting short term accom. Hostels have normally worked pretty well in the past. So yeah, that's definitely a plus. If you're gonna book into a hostel, I would only say book in one, two, maximum three nights, just because the pictures online could look completely different to what it looks like when you first get there. Whether they're old pictures or not, I don't know, but obviously if you've only got a small commitment with how long you stay there, you could decide to extend if you want, or you can go and see if there's better hostels in that area that you prefer more, or you like more. Once you get your accommodation sorted for short term, that is your place you stay for when you go out and you find work, right? When you do find the job, they could be like, their location of where where your work premises are could be super far away from that short-term accommodation. So with this said, if you don't have a car and you can only get public transport or wherever you're working, then 
that would make sense to only keep that short term in the accommodation and then save up or find long term accom after once you've been in that job for a few weeks or however long. Before I moved back out to Perth, WA, I was definitely online searching for kind of like all of the accommodation options. Um, I found a fair few hostels in the city, um, a few in different other places like Fremantle, Scarborough. That's kind of where I'd be more likely to live because it's more coastal and that's kind of what I'm about and what I like, sorry, and where I'm most happiest. But I've got to say, here in Perth, like the hostel options in comparison to other big cities like the other free states, uh, that I've done is that they were certainly a lot more expensive and less lesser of them that I kind of wanted to stay at. Find an accommodation in new locations and in here in Perth. I've done mostly online and also a bit of networking as well. With online I've used booking.com, Hostel World, Flatmates, Airbnb, Facebook Marketplace also another really good one. Obviously when moving here Fortunately, I had the uh, opportunity to live here uh, in Burns Beach with my Aussie family here. But staying in the hostel in the city was certainly an experience to kind of see what it's like. Some of the factors to consider with long-term accommodation uh, would be lease agreements. So what sort of contracts you tie yourself down in with, kind of how long they are, whether it's a sixth month or a year or maybe two months or short term or whatever. Another thing would be the security deposit or the bond, how much you need to pay for that, plus the weekly rent and how much that and how much they need of that in advance, whether it's like two weeks in advance or four weeks, etc. Obviously when you're moving into somewhere full time and for longer periods, you want to make sure that it's the right fit for you and the place you're going to be moving in. So for example, if you go into a share house, uh, which I've done before, I strongly recommend going there and meeting the housemates if you can, seeing what they're like, seeing what their interests are like, what sort of work routines they have. Do they work FIFO as well? Or do they have full-time jobs in the city or nearby? Another key thing I'd say with getting long-term accommodation is to, to not rush into it. Obviously, we know that once you come out of the short term of calm and you're saving and you're making money, that's wicked. And obviously, you want to get sorted. You want to have like your safe haven, so to speak, your place of uh, where you can go back and chill and relax and be completely comfortable. So I think that in order to get that, like taking your time to actually think and see, can I see myself living here for six months or is this a place where I think I'd really enjoy living and, and who I'm living with or where I'm living, you know? So on to the final tips. First one is going to be on your CVs or your resumes, uh, make sure that you put contactable references down. And if you can, at least two. I've got two on mine, which are from my Northern Territory job, which was my most re recent full-time job. And my employer, current employer specifically asked for that and the fact that I put certain names down whether it's like the project manager or your team leader or whoever all they're looking for is to see if you're got what, got what it takes and a, a good worker you know so being able to ease in the make the process easier by putting it onto the CV so they don't have to ask you for it or go looking for it makes makes the process a lot more smoother and faster. Another tip is fill your days with productive activities. So whether this is applying for work for long periods of time and just seeing how much you can pump out and get sorted. One of the other good things is with Seek Jobs, which is a huge search engine here for vacancies for all different apply employers all over the place. When you create a Seek profile, you're able to put all of your qualifications down, put all of your experience, attach a CV, attach a cover letter. So employers can see that anyway, once you've created that and you make it available. So when you go to apply for a job on Seek, it means that you can pump out more and apply, sorry, apply for more because all of that information is stored on Seek's database, if you know what I mean. That's how I managed to, do, to apply for like 20 to 30 jobs a day, just because I would just go apply for a job and then it would take all of the information and then just submit it to the employer. 
Obviously, if you're applying for different types of jobs, then tailor your CV and your cover letter to that job and then change them on Seek if need be. But, I mean, this is all trial and error. This is all flipping seeing what works and what doesn't. And obviously, you're not going to gain any momentum if you don't try. So, stay consistent with your, your daily activities of applying for work and finding accommodation in whichever stage you're at because consistency is key at the end of the day if you completely stop and you lose momentum you're obviously going to take a lot longer to find work another thing is that obviously before you've come out here you would have x amount in your bank like a budget that you can kind of uh use whilst you're not earning and making money i did that when i came out to australia i had about eight thousand dollars in the bank which is four grand english give or take when i was in melbourne and i went through that pretty damn quick so obviously with that being a safety net for you you can use that but just know that that's not going to be there forever so depending on how fast you can find work to lessen the stress obviously it's better to have more money in the bank but if you can give yourself a good window for how long you can it takes to find work this is where going on and doing the research online and seeing what's available for like vacancies in advance is certainly going to help you down the line as well and so that brings us on to the end of yet another episode just want to say massive thanks for sticking around to the end hope you've got some value out of this video if you have give it a nice big thumbs up Subscribe for more videos coming soon to this channel on travel and self-development. Um, and yeah, we'll see you all back in the next video. Take care, guys. See you later.